NASA's Swiss satellite detected this gamma ray burst just as I dropped my daughter off at school and I got the message essentially from the satellite on my mobile phone telling me that it had happened. Three, two, one, we have ignition and we have liftoff of NASA's SWIFT spacecraft on a mission to study and understand gamma ray bursts throughout the universe. When massive stars explode, they can produce gamma ray bursts. The burst reported in nature is the earliest discrete event seen so far in our universe. Astronomers have long had the holy grail of trying to find what they would call primeval galaxies, the very first and earliest galaxies to form in the period of time between the Big Bang itself and the first stars turning on in the universe. And that kind of dark age era is a real focus of, of modern research, trying to understand how structures in the universe came into existence. When I received the text message about the gamma ray burst, it came ultimately from the Swiss satellite. SWIFT is an unusual satellite. At the back you have the burst alert telescope which detects the gamma rays from the gamma ray burst. And here on the left is the X-ray telescope. When SWIFT detects a burst, it slews the whole spacecraft round and points these narrower field, higher resolution telescopes at that patch of the sky. And so the X-ray telescope detects the X-rays from the fading afterglow of the gamma ray burst and that gives us a precise position. And then an optical telescope which also takes a picture of the same patch of the sky. Joining Neil Tamvar along with a global team was Andrew Levan. So when you look at the image of this gamma ray burst what you actually see is a very faint red blob which is the afterglow as it gradually fades away. Uh, and that of course is in many ways unremarkable. And the reason for that is because it is incredibly far away. And so the distance coupled with the expansion of the universe really makes it very, very faint. What Hubble told us back in the 1930s was that there is a, a direct relationship between the, the speed at which an object is moving away from us uh, and its actual distance in space. And so what we do when we measure the redshift is essentially we measure the velocity of the object which is moving away from us. The Doppler shift is something, of course, we're all very familiar with when you hear a car coming along the road towards you. If it's coming fast, you hear it making a high-pitched sound of the noise of its engine. It's that That is when the, uh, the car is moving away from you, the extra velocity stretches out the sound waves and that leads to a lower tone. Essentially, when we look out into space, we're trying to make use of exactly the same technique. We take the light and we put it through a slit which disperses it, and so it's a bit like taking a sunlight and putting it through a prism and making a rainbow. This is the evidence that we live in an expanding universe. What we have here is galaxies at ever greater distances. There are some little dark bands and certain bright lines. If we bring up the locations of those lines, this one due to hydrogen here, this one due to oxygen. The further away the galaxy, the further to the red end of the spectrum the particular lines move. In this bottom one, this galaxy is moving away from us at nearly 100,000 kilometers per second. And the gamma ray bursts signal to researchers just where these ancient galaxies are. But just how are these extraordinarily energetic bursts produced? What we think gamma ray bursts are formed by is the final collapse of very massive stars, perhaps 20 or so times the mass of the Sun. And as they run out of nuclear fuel in their core, they collapse, and in their centre they form a black hole. And the matter raining onto this black hole produces a powerful jet which pierces the star. These two jets expand outwards at what we call ultra-relativistic speeds, that is, very, very close to the speed of light. And so it is these two jets which you see forming at the core here and then moving apart, which are the gamma ray burst. And if you're an observer sitting somewhere on this jet, so along, aligned along this axis, then I see a gamma ray burst. When these gamma ray bursts occur, they are a brilliant flash of light that's picked up by the spacecraft, but then the fading ember, what we call the afterglow, fades away on a time scale of hours. And so if we want to find out about these events and study them in any kind of detail, work out how far away they are when they occurred, then we have to get our observations made really rapidly. Throughout the day, it actually became more and more clear that this was a particularly exceptional event. 
Uh, and once we uh, realised that, we alerted essentially the world to that fact. Astronomers around the world hurriedly turned their instruments towards the ancient exploding star. Another team using this information were able to obtain a spectrum about 13 or 14 hours after the gamma ray burst, from which they were also able to independently measure the redshift. This international team, including Ruben Salvaterra, Guido Quincarini, and Massimo della Valle, amongst others, wrote the second paper appearing in Nature. They used the La Palma telescope in the Canary Islands to obtain a spectrum of the burst some hours before the UK team could. One of the great things about having, in this case, two different groups making similar but independent observations which came up with essentially the same answer is that everyone out there can be reassured that the answer is robust and that we haven't made any kind of mistake. They're brighter than anything else that we see in the universe. So in principle, you should be able to see them really far away, perhaps further than anything else we've ever seen. And just to put that incredible luminosity into some kind of context, if this were an isotropic explosion, then the kind of uh, power we're talking about is about 10 to the 46 watts at peak from these bursts. Now that's what we've been waiting for, but it took us all this time waiting and following up many such uh, gamma ray bursts in order to find one which was a real record breaker, which this one turned out to be. With gamma ray bursts, of course, we've got to do everything with double quick time. It's, it does make it tremendously exciting. Who knows, you could have a great new discovery tomorrow and we'd have no idea today that that was going to happen. This is a, an incredibly exciting way to do astronomy because obviously you have to chase these bursts in real time. So, so every time your phone goes to alert you to the fact that the gamma ray burst, there's a surprise in store for you. Thank you.